Hey, y'all know I've never really celebrated anything on my show before, you know, Christmas, Halloween, and honestly, I don't really care. Oh, f***ing marriage! Dead space. What lies beyond stars and planets in the black frozen reaches of the human mind? A derivative of System Shock and RE4, and that's a good thing. Because it doesn't matter where the ideas originate, most media is derivative, it's not a shot at the games. Oh, and by the way, here's the collected expanded universe. Whoa. Hold the book order, Melvin, you're scaring me. Dead Space is a solid trilogy of games that probably would have become a multi-decade franchise, but, you know, the publisher's EA. So that's unfortunate. They cropped and pruned the thing so well it'd fit in a garden and wrote up a lore book thick enough to flatten your skull. And it's fun. Man, we don't often cover good stuff trademark around here, but here's Dead Space. The original game conveys a cinematic sort of maturity. It doesn't look or feel like your average Xbox fair, maybe because it's copying from Event Horizon and the litany of other works it confidently synthesizes with its own ideas. But regardless, it's always going to come down to design, and the word the studio chose was immersion. Say what you want, but it's not every game that cuts down the UI, strips the HUD, shows your ammo on your gun and your health on your spine. It pulls you in that way, masterfully validating the player perspective as real. Shame Isaac never speaks, though. Oh no, this derelict ship is in utter disrepair. Sure thing, boss, I'll go behind the glass to fix the console. Oh no, guys, I couldn't warn you. It's kind of fascinating that people were and are terrified of this game. I think you've got to be in the mind of the consumer, just trying to play a game, not thinking in terms of hitboxes, models, event flags, and triggers. Okay, ha ha ha, you got me. Are you happy now? The game co-ops the familiar and twists it, but only slightly. The obvious example being the Necromorphs, the resident evil of the USG Ishimura, requiring a stern delimming for efficient neutralization. Headshots aren't your friend, they just make the mutant f***s wig out more than usual, so you go for the limbs, protrusions, anything obvious. Now, about my footage. You might notice me, uh, really sucking at this game in particular, and third-person shooters are some of my favorites. What's wrong, old man K-Bash, going senile? Actually, no, I'm not running for president. My controller's trigger just wouldn't go off unless I pressed five to eight times very frequently. Broken controller, PC port issue, I don't care. And that's important because, playing on normal, the game was totally fine. One thing I really love about Dead Space, at least in the first, is how the mechanics and cinematic vibe complement each other. Just as the incredible visuals and lighting demand appreciation, ask the eyes to linger, Isaac is slow. Literally a mobile fridge, and like, no kidding, right? He's got this bulky suit of armor, his moves are weighty and deliberate, he's carrying around tons of gear. He feels vulnerable in this alien world of jittering flesh freaks. Even they're slow compared to the sequel. So, combat is fair. He's obviously gonna get up. Oh, you, you spooked me right good. Enemies are reactable, often extremely so. The fear comes from the inherent busywork of having to detach flailing limbs instead of the more stationary head. And if you can't do that consistently, Isaac can just freeze dudes up with stasis, given it's limited use, but there's gotta be some challenge in the game. The experience is much more akin to a clunky third-person shooter than a survival horror game. You might be strapped for ammo once or twice, but you're not starved for it, and fear dies where fair thrives. So many factors contribute to the fair gameplay. Yeah, okay, you get jump scared and cheap shot at every once in a while. A at the bench! Really? But your health pool's big enough, you start with the best weapon. Ooh, that's Campbell's Chunky, son! It's a pretty bold choice to make basic pistol extremely efficient, extremely powerful, but it seems necessary. Adding weapons to your inventory only dilutes available ammo. Adding certain kinds of utility, looking at you, stream of stun rifle, infinite hitbox blaster, almost makes the player unstoppable. The ammo dilution issue curbs player experimentation as well, though there's something to be said for increasing the fear factor by taking a risk with a new purchase. It's a shame. I think Dead Space is at its best when you're mauling walking jump scares with weird engineering implements, but you might never get the chance till New Game Plus. Compounding strong weapons and Isaac's personal control, a clear step up from its progenitor are the environments that are seemingly designed with player empowerment in mind. They're usually open spaces chopped up with walls and terrain or long corridors. You'd figure the game would try to pin you in a corner and kill you, which it can, but that's the kind of fate reserved for the uninitiated third-person shooter player. This happens in the open spaces more frequently 
frequently, especially because you'll be honed in trying to sever limbs, but there's so much more room to maneuver you can totally destroy enemies with simple spatial awareness and proactive play. More frequent are the hallways, glorified shooting galleries, you know, and enemies are slow. The game sometimes surprises you with a smart AI or tough enemy type, but overall the battles are fair to a fault, even with a borked controller. And man, the bosses, elevated enemies, or proper encounters are fair, telegraphed, and pretty damn cool. So the game wants to be horror, but for anyone willing to be realistic about the thing, if you pay attention you can call almost every single thing that happens. From getting ambushed, to tripping an event flag, to the next in-game complication, it's hard to be surprised about an ambush when enemies come out of grates, and you walk in a room lined with grates. I'm just saying. But whether it's horrifying or not, Dead Space is still a quality experience. The action gameplay is strong, enjoyable, chunky! The flow from complication to battle to puzzle or activity to battle to cutscene, it handles progression so well. In such an excellent flow, self-contained zones for every chapter, an awesome dedicated waypoint button, clever reuse of rooms, varied gameplay, varied environments, and a derelict spaceship that's so clearly been lived in by a bunch of potty mouths. It's a game or a team that understands drama very well, and even when it's literally dragging you through reused assets, it doesn't let you linger too long. That's the real quality of the story as well. It's immediately dramatic, and frankly, I don't care if I connect with one character or another. If anything, it's best that everyone's as disconnected and alien as they are when Isaac already can't talk, everyone's crazy, and you need to fill in as many blanks as possible. And I know, I know the Dead Space fans are just chomping at the bit, literally ready to burst, because they want to ask every new player about the extremely big brain Omega Chad genius chapter names that spell out Nicole is dead. I think I'm supposed to care about Nicole. They open with her, you defend her at one point. She's one of the few apparently alive people on the ship, not, you know, adulting themselves, but when Isaac realizes she's been eliminated by a chapter naming decision, Isaac gets real sad about it. But man, we don't even know her, not really. The player, I mean. The player is trying to get out alive, Isaac is trying to rescue Nicole. Weird little moment of immersion slipping away, I, I don't know. I'm not gonna pretend the story's bad, it really gets the job done. So Dead Space was nightmarish in 2008, but it held up very well, even if the horror elements are shaky, which is fine. Even if you're not cowering in fear, the construction of the experience is so good. From attention to detail to the core loop, it's worth at least a playthrough, maybe several with new weapon choices. Either way, I'm glad I made it out without pissing my pants. Ah! And guys, this sequel is crazy. Stop it! Almost like the team was ordered to change the core vibe, or recognize that Dead Space was only horror on the first playthrough, the following installment is almost completely hard action. Like watching RE4 turn into 5, but really, really good. You can practically smell the coins weaved into the textures, this thing's budget was so big. Clearly franchise hopes were high, and we got multiplayer, DLC, but I don't care about that. Because Dead Space 2? kicks so much ass. So on the overhead, Isaac's a person now, definitely a human being, that guy, and Nicole's here as a psychotic delusion ghost that basically exists to at you every time you see her. Hold on, game, they never got married. Not to mention the pacing's been increased. Ah, uh, I died in the first level. Uh -oh. But first, the setting. You spend the bulk of this game on a human colony under the same threat as the first game's Ishimura. Even that old mining ship looked fit for living, and the colony in 2 is extremely human, plausible, everything's been considered. Man, even the art on the walls. Except, uh, this is human place? And those are anime character? They use believable locations, mostly co-opted horror tropes for stages. The cathedral, the mall, the childcare center. Oh no. Exploding babies. Necromorph children committing seppuku on my saw blade. The guy from the intro. In case you don't know, this game was marketed with Your mom hates this game. Classy. Not that Dead Space needs to be tame, it's just so... So on the nose about it. I feel like the game's trying to tell me a dead baby joke, you know? Still, sound design, as in the last game, is incredible. That alongside the extremely choice lighting really make the game... More like... A live space. I forgot how to write. Most of what I've thus described is dressing, so let's talk mechanics. Isaac moves clean and quick, leans left to right with no trouble, his armor's smooth and sleek. Of course, there's gonna be detractors when you fundamentally uproot what the previous game set squarely on your shoulders, but hey, maybe it's a mechanical realization of what the game was good at. Not fear, but action. Thus, player empowerment. Isaac's melee strikes and stomps were almost unusable, or okay, at least risky, leaving you vulnerable for an extended period. Now he hits like a Gatling 
fucking truck and that stomp. I can feel it in my bones. And that's necessary because holy piss, the game comes at you fast. It's why I keep saying action, not horror. Terror, horror, dread, whatever. I'm never paralyzed with fear in dead space. Oh god damn it! In one, it came close, but the thing's never stopping your forward motion. Just buck up and drink your spine juice, you'll live. Two's more liable to piss you right the Yahoo! f off than scare you, or else it's got you completely immersed and by the balls. Game flow's one culprit, but let's talk combat first. Long haul Always open spaces, reactable enemies, obvious spawn points. Dead Space 1 gave the player much more control via information than a horror game probably should. The sequel, conversely, turns most fights into mad scrambles with cramped areas, unpredictable spawn points, and faster enemies. Plenty of dudes leaping in your face. Sometimes it's a lot to handle. Get the f*** out of my face! And those meaty melee hits. Your chunky gunshots. And that all-purpose, universally applicable f you, straight to the game, really brings the package together. It's a combat you probably won't appreciate for a few levels, but it grows on you, and specifically by the end, but we'll get on that in a bit. I want to make special mention of the weapons and suits here, because there's almost no way to play this game as intended by the developers. I found this out real quick, you know, load into the store. Uh-oh! What's all that? Tons of free weapons, agility... Guns, free and powerful suits. Man, due to a big stupid at corporate, the DLC is all included in the Steam edition, and you'd be hard pressed to properly follow how the game was meant to be experienced originally anyway. Thankfully, it doesn't change too much in practice, but getting the ripsaw early really makes a game full of leapy fools a lot more manageable. Another sidebar, like, People always put the force gun really low on tier lists, but it should probably be top tier, yeah? It does something no other weapon can, control everything on screen with a click. You ever talk kindergarten, though? Pressurized room sweeping blast to get that under control right quick. I'm not kidding about the enemies either. We're talking from behind, from the ceiling, anywhere they shouldn't be, they are, and they're nuts. But pick that force gun up. Yeah, everybody gangster till K-Bash whips out his force gun in the cum room. Overall, the combat's improved both in pace and universal weapon usefulness, with secondary fires actually contributing for the most part. New and unusual weapons perfectly on theme with the game and with interesting niches and utility. But see, I'm writing this out and thinking... You're not getting the real picture here. The real Dead Space 2 experience. See, one of the design keywords for Dead Space is immersion, and one of the new ones in Dead Space 2 is roller coaster. We're talking the kind of game flow only 60 million dollars can lubricate. Every step of the journey is worthwhile. It swims from safe point to drama, to combat, to activity, to combat, to event, in a perfect loop from start to finish. And by the end of the game, the combat shifts from claustrophobic panic attacks to a full-on cross-station shootout between you and an ever-regenerating enemy, plus the necromorphs you meet along the way. The ending sequence is so empowering, so high energy. It's the kind of moment that erases anything negative you felt prior. It takes the game from something you played to something you beat. And let's not forget the rest of the game. Isaac's journey is so f insane, dude. This is the guy who didn't utter a word last game, who barely emoted at all, and now he's stuck in a political conflict and just look at this. Oh yeah, look at me, I'm getting shot at, but only the bad guys are dying. No worries, I'm God. My plot armor's twice my size and thick as my dick. Oh, fuck. Uh oh, look at the precarious situation I am in. Please don't grind my bones into paste, rotating death cylinders. And the game's willing to slow down when it needs to, often after the high action segments. Sometimes you gotta ride the elevator to space, you know? And the 60 second punchline, thank you! Okay, regardless of that, you'll float out in space for a bit, always doing something, always moving forward, but momentarily able to breathe where there is no air. Until you get in the rocket chair because your friend's in trouble and quote, Iron Man back to her. Okay, buddy, you're an engineer. You know this. As soon as you land, those knees are dust. You know, I think Isaac would totally suck as a protagonist if he weren't the most consistently useful, steel-spined, sensibly insane person around. And getting to see him do all this crazy yeah. shit really elevates him from mere engineer to hyperhuman, especially when his fellow humans just don't measure up. And it's the insanity of the situation, really getting to empathize with the guy. You know, there's probably something crawling in the vent, but... Oh, what? Nothing? <laughs> Thank God. God, Gary sent you your stuff! Get your lawyer off my back! I oh, that's not good. <laughs> Do I even need to invoke the eyeball scene? Go read the article. It's a really intuitive, well-designed moment in the game. It's everybody's favorite. Nobody finds it nauseating. 
<laughs> Dead Space 2 is the epitome of a well-directed, well-designed experience. And while fans of the first might have been disappointed, well, that might have been a problem, actually. The game sunk way too much money for a pittance in return, competitive with the first sales, but not up to the projected goal. And yet, this is probably one of the 360's best games, especially when propped up against the mountains of repetitive AAA schlock on offer. So, you know. E.A. Borks. Everything up as usual. It's not hard to find someone complaining about Dead Space 3, but I want to assume they're champions of the first game. All things considered, maybe ignoring a couple of EA's, not Visceral's, EA's decisions, it's just a less visually consistent, slightly less tight Dead Space 2. Maybe fans got too much of a good thing, huh? I mean, the shift is obvious, but in that really gamer tweet, look, this one thing isn't anything like Dead Space, game bad, way, ignoring everything else done right. Yeah, it starts with an action sequence, yeah, the villain looks like Elton John. Yeah, it gives you a little space before hard swapping to Ice Planet. Yeah, you kill normal people. Shit. But it's still Dead Space, a series that had potential. So what's up? It's full of sweeping vistas, sublime visuals, perfect shots. And these elements originated in the first game, but 3 is inconsistent in its presentation. 2 was varied as well, but mostly stuck to believable and interesting horror tropes, then a revisit to the Ishimura. 3's wild variants from urban sci-fi war zone, to space, to ships reminiscent of the original, to arctic horror, and finally to a dead alien ruin is unexpected and confusing, tonally dissonant. Maybe it's an underappreciated element elements of the original two, but they managed to connect the player to the spaces with verisimilitude, clever repetition of certain areas, and, mostly, fitting together with the overarching concept of horror, even if it was performative more than practical. Dead Space 3 is almost totally action. The story is revealed in cutscene checkpoints delivered between gameplay segments, unlike the integrated cutscenes of previous games. Isaac's lost his new love, she's with another guy, that's gonna be the conflict for most of this game, isn't it? I, the captain, think this asteroid belt is A-OK. -okay. It was not A-OK, -okay, jackass! Not to fret, you may go through tons of those endless action segments the last game propped up, but at least everyone else has to. Oh no, they weren't built well. Isaac remains the luckiest and most useful person on screen at any time, which makes it really uh -huh. annoying when some pin dick rebounds trying to tell you anything, but I have to concede it made the inevitable comeuppance that much more satisfying. Uncucked again, Isaac. <laughs> hey, you did what you had to, bro. True, but this next part is beyond the call of duty. Oh man, it feels so good. What a prick. I haven't discussed the stories at length, but part of the fall off to me is not leaving room for the player to invest. The previous games were built on a strong narrative base with supplementary materials to boot, and they incorporated themes of guilt and acceptance, weaving them really elegantly into gameplay, telling a story with action without needing to throw a thousand nouns at you. But this is mostly about the side characters dying and Isaac proving himself to nobodies when he's absolutely the most somebody here. It feels like a bad action movie, said it once and I'll say it again. At the very least, Isaac's sanity is called into question in gameplay and story, which, if you can find anyone to co-op with today, good luck, you can directly experience during certain cutscenes. As for encounters, the game's a mix of its forebears, with hallways straight out of one and leaping goons from two. Enemies feel somewhat beefier and they get in your face a lot, but that's not much different than two. They use a lot of zombie-like foes, presumably to get out of the inevitable necromorph malaise caused by three installments of relatively samey enemies. But no matter what you're killing, combat's never a problem. It's fair. Burn enough ammo and you're golden. You still have to stomp corpses for loot drops, Melee's fine. Granted, you get shot at a lot more in this game by humans and zombies alike and use cover, and this is looking like a weaker Gears of War. And you're never really strapped for resources, unless you choose to do some of the bonus missions that pop up throughout the game. Well, doing them adds to the universe slightly with additional characters and backstory, but the first one I did drained my ammo so bad despite the incredible promised rewards that I spent the bulk of my next chapter money on ammo. It was also the last side mission I played, but the overall content is strong and well-cropped. Can't forget them Dead Space set pieces. Ow! Ow! Ah! 
The only real standout f yeah. up is the one recurring boss in the game. Look, I don't know what happened. I don't know who did what, but the guy can stun lock you. Usually it only hits twice in a row, but it can kill you a lot. I mean, I'm not mad. It's just weird. Weird to make a boss like that and you fight it three times. Honestly, this is my fault for only having a shotgun. The reception seems more like a spiritual backlash than a qualitative one. It's still built on the bones of two. It's been suggested the game was built from the ground up for co-op explicitly, but I never really had enough trouble to say that. One neat system the game added was weapon crafting, but aside from upgrading my extremely average weapon a few times, I didn't screw around with it till the end game. You know, little material gathering robots doing stuff off screen for you. Not a personal turn on, uh, I don't really like how valuable some resources were compared to others, but that rifle with rocket add-on and no splash damage was really, really good. And with universal ammo, you're more or less free to take whatever weapon combo you want. It's great. But then the game wants to be played multiple times, so the player gets the most out of it. Maybe the player gets addicted. Maybe they play some multiplayer, buy some DLC buy some crates. Like I said, spiritual backlash. Dead Space has value. 3 has value. It's inherently decent. But I think there's a misstep somewhere. 1 sputtered out of the gate and eventually got somewhere sales-wise when outlets reviewed the game well. 2 basically quadrupled the player base, but in both cases, the company was leaking money. 3's okay, though with all the bits and bobs in place, you can tell money was a primary concern, and it barely affects the game, if at all. But maybe Dead Space wasn't the financially solvent IP they thought it was. Maybe it's not enough to iterate on old ideas really well, or spin new ones for that matter. Maybe it's not enough that only horror fans and core gamers will realistically give it a shot. And maybe multiplayer doesn't matter all that much, and loot crates just sour the players who already bought in. Either way, it sucks for Visceral, but I'd expect nothing less from EA. Hey, it's K-Bash. Special thanks goes out to my $4 patrons, whose names are on the screen. The show's on its way somewhere good thanks to the community's generosity. And special thanks goes out to my extra generous patrons, who are... 1307 Azero Basement Dweller BZ Soul Beverage Crisp Boha Brandon Brandon Harden Brios Cal Caesar T Chief Chris A. Cody Golden. Corgi the Lad. Couch Moba. Crack Stuntman. CW Glassworks. Dakota Storm Jones. Dara. David Castillo. Den Het. Don't worry about it. Dylan Coffee. Exa. Frankenstitch. Guard Corey. Gucci Plant. Hatsune Miku's Crack House. Harkaj. Huey. Jason Lasky, Jaden, J. Deus, John Weber, Joke Frog, Justin Sherry, Keith Myers, Kelvin, Crayden, Crazy Dark Chocolate, Latrix, Laundry Mom, Lego Sid, Liam, Lawn, Lucas Phoenix, Magical Madman, Markules, Marmato, Maximilian Wolfgang Niver, Milky Moo Official, Mr. Dodongo, Miles Burris, Old Burgle, Only LK, Pink Peacock, Quillworth, Quinn, Reggie Rodriguez, Ricochet Frame, Sagit Trash, Siren Smells Good, Salty Smasher, Sekai Noah Warida, Seamus Nerd, Shod, Simp God, Special Children, Spooky Grimalkin, Sublime Cataclysm, Super Sandwich Guy, Tenken Zephyrborn, TFY Lex, They Call Me Gambit, Thrips Heartrop, Travis Edwards, V01156, Venom, Viewers Like You, Vic, Walter Taggart, Waposa, Weeb Trash, Well Shit, Zachary V, Zanasso, Zane the Impure, Zane the Pure, Zed Slayer Gamer. If you'd like to help support the show and make it even better, check out my Patreon. We've got all kinds of goals and lots of rewards in store. Stay tuned for more. K-Bash out.